Dexter. Great to see you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Listen, Gossip was such a fun watch, but I want to start by asking you something that's been worrying me, that's been on my mind since I watched the film. One of the villains says, when you meet a celebrity, your IQ drops 50 points. Yeah. Is that a fact? And is this happening to me right now? I, I don't think so. I think you're. I think you're managing to maintain your composure. You seem like you, you you've kept your intellect intact. I, I'll let you know if you if he really drops off a cliff. Intellect intact. I wouldn't go as far, but thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I paused a few times the scene where Cole is uh, scrolling through the text messages he sent to Sadie because I felt like it was a very important part. Uh, it was important to read what he was saying. Yeah. It says a lot about his character. And one message he uh, sent to Sadie, he asked her if she wanted to uh, watch Castaway, but then he didn't think it was a good idea because of the story with her mom. So I don't know if that was just his sense of humor, the most awkward thing to say. Um, but do you want people to stop this scene and read carefully because it's as important as the rest of the movie, really? Um, that's not the intention. It's nice if they do that. I didn't really think about that. I think I make the film okay. and you think it goes as one go. But I suppose now you've mentioned it, that people will stop it and have a look. I just... Uh, it's it's written by a very clever man in the editing department. A lot of, it was a lot of a collaboration there. We had a lot of fun creating that whole awkward conversation. Well, it's not even a conversation. It's just a sort of outpouring. So yeah, we had a lot. Of, if people do, hopefully they find it funny. It is funny. It's part of the script, part of the character building. So I wanted to just see what was going on, really. Yeah, he's it's he's being awkward, and <laughs> and it's really talks about it explains how useless he is at communicating with people, especially people that he really likes. Yeah, absolutely. But images doesn't don't count apparently. So um, apparently. there are two sequences. <laughs> apparently, uh, there are two sequences in particular I'd like to talk about. The bus scene, uh, which is like four or five minutes long, especially the moment on the edge of the cliff doing a one eighty. Can you just walk me through? The that precise moment in particular? It's a, it's a very important moment because it really shows the level that Sadie's skill is at. You know, she's an incredibly accomplished and effective operative, and she's very skilled. Um, so we built three of those buses. We shipped them out to Albuquerque, one of the, but that place, we that bit, we put it on a big uh, uh, scaffold in the middle of the stage. Uh, and we spun it round and the actors were inside and we shot it in slow motion and we spent a lot of time doing it and had a lot of fun. But Anna is, is the one who makes that work. If you watch Anna in that bit, which I've done many, many times, and Chris as well stuck to the window. Uh, it's, <laughs> I was going to say. It's, it's brilliant acting from both of them and it's a very exciting moment. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, this is obviously the cameo sequence uh, at the market. Cameo after cameo. Um, just walk me through that whole sequence because John Cho, Anthony Mackie, Sebastian said and of course at the end, Ryan Reynolds. How did that conversation go? Did you just call Ryan Reynolds and were like, I need you to be in this film for like 20 seconds. You're going to have one eye, but it's going to be great. I, I, I didn't do that conversation. Uh, somebody else okay. did, the producer did, Chris. Uh, but yeah. Chris and, and Ryan are, are old buddies. They've got, you know, Chris helped him out. And I went and spoke to Ryan and Ryan said, oh, Chris really helped me out on my movie. I would do anything for him. So they're really good <laughs> friends. And, and I said, okay, well, I want you to wear an eye patch. He said, okay, great, let's do that. <laughs> so it, it's really about, some of it is like, hey, I really like John Cho, can we ask him? And they said, he said, yes. I was like, fantastic. So then I got John and 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 Sebastian I know a bit. Uh, I love Sebastian. He's a great, great guy. And Mackie I'd not met, but Mackie was like, why are we shooting this at night time? If I'd known it was night time, I would have stayed in bed. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> we got to do it. He's a brilliant man. He's a brilliant man. The meet cute in a rom-com is the starting point. You know, it, it yeah. gives you the tone of the movie. You could choose your favorite meet cute in a rom com you wish you could rewrite and direct. As an action packed spy movie, which one would it be? Why and who would you cast as the stars of the film? Oh, God. I, I mean, uh, if I could do that, I, I'd, be, uh, I'd be writing my own. I, I don't know. Uh, what, would be, what, would be, what would be the most <laughs> obvious? I, one thing, I, mean, like, I don't know. A pretty woman uh, with. Uh, with uh, I'd keep Julia Roberts because I love JR. Uh, um, and who would I I'd put Harrison Ford in it? And I bet you keep Richard Gere. But then you, I don't know. You just make it. There's some some huge 
I don't know, explosion. I, I don't know. That's a huge question. I can't possibly begin to answer it. I, I can actually see Pretty Woman as a spy movie. There you go. Yeah. Pretty Woman and as Judah, a spy movie. That's that's the best that I can do. And Judah Roberts will be the spy, obviously, not Richard Gere. Judah yes. Roberts. Yes, Judy Roberts is the spy, exactly. Can you imagine uh, Richard Gere's face when she, she learns she's not actually a sex worker, but uh, a spy for the CIA? There that you would go. Be... Exactly. That'd flip it on his head. He's the sex worker. Oh, he's done that as well. Yes, American Gigolo. Yeah. Anyway, forget. That's a crazy question. Exactly. The action scenes in Gossip, uh, they they can't. They're incomplete without the songs that you added as well. Um, can you just tell me how you choose uh, what song you're going to use and how it's going to complete the scene you have in mind? Well, sometimes that comes very quickly and very early on. Like the bus chase was always going to be my Sharona. That's a choice I made very early on and then other things in the edit you try lots of different and people come and make suggestions you try lots of different things and you probably end up coming back to where you started but you have to try and lots of so so i'm not as as uh, as thorough like someone like edgar wright who i know uh you know maps out every song or quentin tarantino they have that all worked out i'm, yeah. I'm a bit more trial and error but some things i absolutely know and others i'm like open to new and interesting ideas so it's just one of the great joys of editing you know you put something together and and um uh, but i play music on set when 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 there's certain scenes like in the restaurant when they're fighting i put a tune on or if, if there's lots of extras and or lots of background artists rather and, and and they're at the restaurant i put on music to create atmosphere and and feelings yeah. I, i love to do that